everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Life from Ashes. Today I'm really excited. We are going to be in the kitchen. I am super excited. I absolutely love making cooking videos for you all. Today we will be working on some ground cherry jelly. Now this recipe is not just for ground cherries. You can use um, grapes and currants and ground cherries or any kind of cherry that's similar like that for this recipe. Super, super excited to share that with you guys. Um, we're going to get into that right, right, right now. I just wanted to give you guys a shout out and thank you all my new subscribers who have subscribed to me recently. I love you guys so much. It's totally a wonderful thing and I appreciate it whenever you guys um, comment and interact with me. Um, it just, it just blesses my heart to the fullest. You have no idea. All right, guys. So without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's make some jelly. All right, so what you'll need here is whatever berry you've chose to use here, and these are my ground cherries from my garden this year. So you're going to put them in and just cover the very top of them um, flush with water, and you're going to start to get those into a nice rolling simmer. We're going to soften these, and then we're going to break them down after. So definitely get these going. Um, we're definitely going to make them kind of stewed is what we're looking for and then we're going to mash them up okay so we got our canner um, heating up i've got my jars in it sterilizing for 15 minutes so that is going on right now i'm not using a regular water bath i'm just using a deep pot so now that our stuff has been cooking down for a bit we're going to mash it all up mash it very well because you don't want any full berries left in here you want to get all of the juices and stuff out of the berries so mash that up really awesome and then we'll see what we do next okay so that looks really good um, we're gonna tap that off looks perfect that is exactly what we're looking for perfectly crushed stewed berries awesome Okay, so now we're gonna let that boil down. We're gonna cook all that out and we wanna get um, the pectin from the berries, skins, and seeds to come out. And you'll see that, you'll notice this foam starting to form. That is the natural pectin. This is a pectin-free recipe. We're going to derive it ourselves and it's going to turn into an awesome jelly. This is a great um, way to learn how to make jelly, especially if you don't have pectin on hand. Okay, so this looks good. You make sure you um, scrape that foam out just a wee bit at the end. You just want to pick up some of that stuff sitting on the top because that will end up in your jelly if you don't. Okay, so right here I have like a metal um, sieve and I've lined it with a few layers of cheesecloth. And I have a pot underneath to catch the drippings. And we're going to take our mash and pour it right in the center of your cheesecloth whenever you're ready. This will help it to strain out all of the juices and keep all of the seeds and things and skins we don't want in our jelly. Okay. So go ahead and pour that right in. I put the spoon there, it helps stop the splashback. This is piping hot, you do not wanna burn yourself. If you were a child, please do not do this by yourself. Have an adult help you. All right, so once you've got that all poured out in there, you're gonna make sure you have a piece of um, twine or string or something, so we're gonna tie this all together. And first we're gonna just mash some of that down in there. Let those juices pour out. And this is still very hot, so wrapping this up while it's hot is important. My twine is stained red. That's because I just finished making some um, currant jellies and I've also made some raspberry jellies and some marmalade and I've just been jellying it up <laughs> this week. All right, so you just want to make sure that that string is tied real secure and tight. You do not want anything to escape. We will be pressing on this and squeezing it out to make sure we get all of those beautiful juices from the ground cherry mash that we have made. So we're just going to lightly 
press along the sides. Remember, we have used cheesecloth, and if you do press too hard at first, you could tear it, and you don't want an explosion in your jelly. All right, so now that I've got the remainder of the juice out of there with the spoon, we're gonna let that rest and cool before I squeeze out the rest of the juice. And then we'll come back to that. All right, so now that we have our juice in our pot, we're going to get it nice and warm. We're gonna heat it up slowly. And we definitely have to make sure you've measured out your liquid so you know exactly how much liquid you have. And so you know how much sugar you're going to need. It is very important to be exact. All right, so I've pre-measured my sugar to go with my um, liquid. You're gonna use the exact same amount of sugar to liquid in this recipe. So if you have two cups of liquid, you're gonna use two cups of sugar. If you have three cups, you'll use three cups. And that's how you do this. And we're going to heat it slowly as to dissolve our sugar properly before we get it to a boil. It's important to get all the crystal sugar melted down before you start to the boil or you may end up with crystal sugar in your jelly as an end result. All right, so now that we've got this all rolling and boiling, um, my sugar's dissolved, so now I've got it up at a medium heat. Um, my stove um, is pretty hot, so I like to just do it at a medium heat. Most people will do it at a medium high, but where I'm at, medium heat is perfect for me. I may end up turning this down a little bit towards the end anyway. Um, but we're gonna stir this. Now stay on this, do not leave your stove. Be stirring this the whole time pretty much. Give it a break here and there. Um, you do not want to uh, burn or boil over. It's basically candy if, you, if you're not careful. So jellies have a certain stage. If you have a jelly thermometer, that would be really helpful here. If not, you don't need to worry about a thermometer. We can do this without it. Um, we definitely want to scrape off the foam that boils up in here. You do not want that in your jelly once you're finished. So scrape carefully as much of that foam out as you can to ensure you have a really nice jelly. All right, so now that I've had mine boiling for quite some time now, it's not ready. I know this already, but I'm just going to show you very carefully here in a nice cool glass dish. It's too wet, it's too slippery, it's not forming a gel yet. It's not quite ready, so we're gonna keep the boil going. All right, so while we're boiling that down and it's almost reaching to a point where I can tell it's getting ready, I've been boiling for quite some time now. You'll be boiling for a good 20, 30, 40 minutes depending on what you got going on. For this very moment, because I'm getting close, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hot jars from the pot so that they are ready to um, accept the jelly. I want you to keep in mind while you're doing this to be very careful, these jars are hot and it is very important to sterilize your jars properly before you use them. It ensures that you won't have any botulism or anything like that happening um, with your product whenever you're finished. Also important to have um, your lids and rings ready and warmed up, not boiling water, but warmed up in pretty hot water um, to let the wax warm up for the perfect seal. All right, that is looking a lot better. It's definitely tasty and I'm excited. This is the first time I make ground cherry jelly. I only had one plant this year, but if I would have known how awesome it was, look at that drip very slowly. We're definitely a few minutes away from jelly. That's awesome. But yeah, I would have planted so many more, and this year I will be planting. These are Aunt Molly's ground cherries, but I will be planting pineapple ground cherries this year, and I'm super stoked for that. Oh my gosh, guys, there is jelly and look at the color and look at the consistency. Let's can get that taken off. Make sure you have your funnel for your jars and some vinegar on hand and a cloth ready and a ladle. 
and we're going to go ahead and get this jarred. Awesome. We're going to fill our jar to um, one quarter inch from the top of the jar to um, ensure a perfect amount of jelly and a perfect seal. All right, be very careful not to get this on yourself. Oh my gosh, but move quickly. <laughs> All right, we got enough for one jar. So that's not too shabby. Um, for only one plant, it produced so well, and we ended up getting this beautiful jar of jam. And I couldn't be happier. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So delicious. So delicious. Golden deliciousness. All right. So now you're going to go ahead and grab your preheated seal and ring. And don't forget, we have to wipe the lid of our jar with some vinegar. I have a little vinegar here in a dish. And I'm just gonna clean the very rim off. We don't want anything there to prevent our seal from being secure and firm. And sometimes some jelly can get on the edge and stop that from happening. So we keep that clean. Go ahead, add your seal. And only tighten this finger tight. You don't want it too, too tight um, when it goes into the canner. Just finger tight. And go ahead and carefully pick that up and place that into your canner. And because of my altitude, I have to put mine in for 15 minutes. Um, if you're not sure, you can go ahead online and check out what your altitude is for your area and time your jar to whatever your altitude is where you are. All right, so now that that's all complete, I'm going to go ahead and pull my jar out. It is ready to go. Still extremely hot, so you're not going to want to touch that. You're going to leave it alone, and you're going to wait for your jar to make a popping sound. That is the sound of your lid securing, and it is a beautiful, beautiful noise once you've finished working on it. Look how beautiful and clear and golden that is. Absolutely perfect. All right, everyone, welcome back, and I hope you totally enjoyed that tutorial, and I hope you give that a try this year, and that you um, try planting something new. I'm super excited to have um, seed videos coming out very soon. Gardening season is afoot, and I'm getting that itch to start planting, even though it's way too cold here just yet for me to get too excited. Um, I do have a few plants going on in my house right now, like peppers and things like that, um, just to tide me over and help me get over my problems of wanting to be in the garden in the middle of the cold. But anyways, if you guys are totally interested in that, keep an eye out for those videos coming up. I will have a bread video coming up in the next few days if you guys are interested in that, how to make an artisan looking bread. We will get into that very shortly. Other than that, I'm so glad that you got to join me. Again, I thank you, I love you, I bless you, and take care. Bye for now.